So a company called Sculpt Fun sent me their new S10 laser engraver. And all I need to do is assemble it and see if it's any good. I'm actually surprised how well the instructions are laid out, seeing that they're completely detailed, they have pictures, and they're in color. Along with all the hardware bags having the step number on it, along with everything in the bag. And this did actually make the assembly really easy. And I was able to go from a table full of parts to the full working machine in about 20 minutes. It is using a mix of V-wheels for movement along with a linear rail for the actual laser head. And it does come ready for air assist with the air assist line already installed. The main control box is at the front of the machine. It's also where your power switch is and data in. And with everything all set up, the last thing I need to do is turn it on. And you should be able to hear in the background the fan noise from the machine being on, which isn't the quietest in the world. And it's nice to see that there are some measurements built into the frame of the laser, which will definitely come in handy. And like I said before, it's set up for air assist, but it doesn't have an air assist pump, so you'll have to get one of those separately. But I happen to have one on hand that goes to my X-Tool D1 laser. It's a little bit of a tight fit, but it does work. And with that set up, you can hear how much air is coming out of this, which I think is a lot more than the X-Tool, but I'll have to check later. And it has this little clip installed on the line itself, so you can adjust how much air is coming out if there's too much. And it does come with this little metal sheet to protect your cutting area, but it is absolutely tiny. And I really suggest getting the full-size honeycomb bed with the metal plate on the back. So you can protect and use your full cut area. With this cutting area installed, everything moves around fine and nothing is hitting on it. You do have to manually focus your laser by moving it up and down. They do supply this little piece of aluminum that is 50 millimeters tall, which will allow you to adjust it to any material put down. And with it adjusted, there are two thumb screws on the back to lock it in place. Then just remove the block and you're good to go. So let's actually get this thing going and plug in the data cable that's going to our computer. You will need to install some drivers for this, and I'll have a link in the description below for that. So when it comes to software to actually run this thing, it doesn't come with any. I'm going to be using Lightburn, which is a paid program, and you would need the G-Code license, which is $60. There's also a free program called Laser Gerbil that you can use, but I've never used it before. I've only used Lightburn, so that's what I'm going to use for this. Inside of Lightburn, I'm going to go to Devices and then Find My Laser and see if it can actually find my laser or not. And unfortunately, nothing came up, so I'm just going to manually input everything. Just go to the Create Manually button and just pick the Gerbil option. We only have a USB connection, so use that one. And then you can name the laser. I'm just going to put S10 and then put in the work area dimensions, which are 400 by 400 millimeters. And then just leave your origin point at the front left and turn off the auto home feature because this laser doesn't have any limit switches to actually home with. And then you're gonna be all set up. So I made some files for Lightburn that will help you figure out what settings to use on your materials. And I'll have links to both of them in the description below and they're both free. And honestly, you should be using files like this for any new materials you're getting so you know exactly what settings to use for cutting and engraving because you really don't want to be guessing at it, and a lot of the settings you'll find online are not always going to work. And this way you'll have physical cards on the material you're using to reference. And try to make sure the material you're using is as flat as possible, because if not, like this cardboard, it could start dragging it around and mess up the accuracy of your cut. But if you have a cutting surface like I have, you can hold stuff in place with magnets, which really helps. And you can see what I mean by it being way off from it moving the material around. And honestly, this is just a test on cardboard to make sure that everything was working properly. So I'm going to do this again on some material I actually use, which is some 3mm plywood. And just keep in mind, when using a laser like this, or any laser in general, it's going to make a ton of smoke, because it is vaporizing the material. So make sure you're doing this in a well-ventilated area, or have ventilation set up. This engraving test came out really nice, and you can see all the different shades and depths that you can engrave with this. And the same for the cutting test. And you can clearly see all the parts that cut out cleanly. And you can see the ones on the back that almost went all the way through. So now I can do whatever I want with this material, seeing that I know all the settings I would need to achieve it. So I'm going to engrave and cut out a working QR code, just as an example. And here it is. I did a deeper engrave on this, and even with the air assist, there's a little bit of smokiness on here. So to clean that up, just use an alcohol wipe, and it should take everything off. As you can see, it's much cleaner looking now. And moment of truth, will it scan? And it looks like it works. And you're not only limited to wood and paper, you can engrave on stainless steel as well. Even with my alignment of the text being a little bit off on this, it came out really nice. And if it has any residue on it, you can just wipe it off with an alcohol wipe like before. And you're not really engraving it, you're more marking the metal by burning it. And this doesn't work on all metals, it works on stainless steel, anodized aluminum, and painted metal. Basically it just burns off the paint. 
So I did want to show how much air this thing is moving through the air assist system. So I just filled the plate with water so you can see it. And I was curious to see how it turned out versus the Xtool D1 airflow. And it's a lot more, as you can see. And this is using the same air pump. And if we just take a look at both of them, you can see that the airline for the S10 is much bigger than the one on the Xtool D1. So it just allows it to supply more air. If you are seriously looking to get one of these to do work with, I highly suggest getting an enclosure for it. Especially if you have kids, animals, or just other people in your room. And this is mostly because this is an open diode laser. So if anyone just walks in or looks at it, it can damage their eyes severely. This also dramatically cuts down on the amount of smoke in the room and you can ventilate it out a window really easily. So you won't have to worry about slowly killing yourself from breathing in smoke all the time. Oh, and one thing I wanted to touch on to make sure you know this. This is a piece of clear acrylic with a paper backing. These kind of lasers cannot cut clear acrylic. As you can see, the paper on this is burnt, but the front side of this is completely smooth still. And where the paper did burn, it melted the acrylic on the opposite side a little bit. So technically you can only engrave on this if you have paper on it. You can use this type of laser to cut opaque acrylic, but it doesn't cut the best and the edges will not be very clean. So overall, what do I think about this laser? It does a really good job at cutting materials that it's supposed to, with really clean and smooth lines. The assembly of this whole thing was really straightforward and the instructions were really well done to the point where I wasn't lost at any point while putting it together. But when it came to actually using it and the software side of things, there was almost no instructions, which just kind of left me to googling how to do it. And this laser isn't super cheap, it is $600. I've seen them as cheap as $550 when on sale. And if you wanted to compare it to the X-Tool, the X-Tool is about $100 more. But the X-Tool does come with Wi-Fi built in, so you don't have to be tethered to a computer. They also have their own laser program that comes with it and just kind of works out of the box. Or you can use Lightburn as well. So it's really going to be up to you and what you need out of your laser cutter. But one thing this S10 laser has over the X-Tool is definitely got to be the price of upgrades. Everything for this laser is about 20 to 40% cheaper than the same thing for the X-Tool. And I tried to list out everything I used in the video so you could see the difference in price. But overall, it is a pretty good 10 watt laser and definitely gets the job done, along with lots of upgrade paths that you can go on depending on what you're doing. And I'll have links to all the different options in the description below. But that's just what I think after testing it out for a bit. Let me know in the comments what you think and if you would be interested in getting one of these over the X tool or vice versa and why, because I would actually like to know. Well, other than that, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.